So I got this question on a recent community post and I thought it was a pretty good topic. With Swarm Disaster now out, how worth is it putting tank relics on your supports? And is it worth exchanging some of their supportive capabilities for that tankiness if you had to choose? So whilst I think this question is focused more on Swarm Disaster, where the enemies hit very hard as you know, actually I think the answer to this question applies to Memory of Chaos and the game in general too. And it was already worth it to build tankiness before. It's just that Swarm Disaster is a bit more extreme. So for context, I use tanky builds to clear Memory of Chaos. And also more recently, I used the same tanky builds to finish Swarm Disaster. I might have had to level up some relics a bit more for a little bit more tankiness. But for the most part, this is the team and builds I used. And you can see I got this final achievement of clearing the hardest difficulty three times using different paths. And I did Abundance, Remembrance and Destruction. So people might not be used to building tanky and especially for people who are coming from Genshin where if we get HP or defense rolls in our artifacts it's seen as unlucky. So building like this can be strange to us. So let's get into the topic and answer the question. First of all I thought it would be interesting. Let me show you a bunch of different speedrunner builds and we can see if we notice anything. So what we notice is the very high HP and defense. And sometimes they don't even care about using an optimal support set like hackerspace buffing speed. And in fact, some of these builds don't even have insane speed either. Like, like they're not using 150 speed or... So if I could sum up a response to this question, if the speedrunners are building their supports tanky and they are trying to clear as fast as possible, then the average player who doesn't care as much about optimal damage should probably build tank too. Now obviously I do have to asterisk that statement a bit, since technically one of the reasons why these guys are building tank supports is often speedrunners don't even use a healer or a shielder. So in order for these guys to make their videos, their supports do need to survive long enough to finish their run without any healing. But having said that, it's still a good point because it's also proof that players going for the most optimal damage for very fast gameplay, they don't care about their supports damage. And in the grand scheme, it's meaningless how much damage their Bronya or Asta or Tingyun does. If you see, I actually have this crazy win damage bonus piece with lots of crit. But I don't really use this piece. I still prefer a tanky piece like this instead. So I think overall, the speed running insight is a good lesson. And if they don't care about supports damage, then you don't need to care about supports damage either. So what stats do you want? So just going through all these characters, I can definitely say for starters, whether it's a Harmony or a Healer or a Nihility. And even if Luasha's healing scales with attack or Tingyun wants attack for a buff or Bonya's ult scales with crit damage, those stats aren't your priority. I would say the first and most valuable stat you look for is speed. And just going through all my supports, having relics with speed on them is important to me. But this is key, I actually don't care about having each piece upgrade into speed tons of times. Instead, I'm actually quite happy if I get some HP percent, defense percent, effect res percent, and getting a mix of these along with speed is very nice. So in regards to effect res, first of all, DPS wise, getting 30% effect res here with this broken keel relic set, obviously it helps give your team crit damage, which is very nice, but for its main effect, there are lots of enemies with annoying crowd control debuffs or damage over time debuffs. For example, like Kokolia freezing you or this Arumation Gatekeeper imprisoning you. And you won't actually be able to tell this in game, but some of these attacks have a 100% base chance and at higher levels, some of these enemies even have effect hit rate too. So unfortunately, unless they hit someone like Luocha who has traces with huge built-in resistance, I did some calcs and even if you have a few effect red stats, it's still going to be likely more than not that you're still going to be hit with these debuffs, but still reducing that chance is better than nothing. Even with Luocha who has this 70% base crowd control resistance trace, because this is a separate multiplier to effect res in the formula, he actually gains less from effect res than normal characters, but it can still help a bit. And I'd rather get effect res substats than like a flat attack or a flat defense substat. So do you need maximum speed? Now, obviously 
So David Crofters have actually came up with thresholds in regards to full optimization of your turns. And this can also mean sometimes a bit of extra speed. If it doesn't impact your threshold, it won't actually change anything. But at the same time, there's also enemy debuffs which lower your speed. There's action delays like in prison and there's also different enemy ways which resets a turn order. Basically, even though there are these threshold optimizations, honestly for most players, I don't think you really need to worry about perfectly min-maxing your speed and being super precise. It's very overkill and there's many factors which can affect it. Instead, I think it's better to just keep it simple. Getting speed on your relic is good. There's no need to overcomplicate it too much further than that. Now, obviously, some supports have their buffs which scale with some stat, like Tingyan's skill scales with her attack, Ponyan's ultimate scales with her crit damage, Lord Trial wants attack. So how much does building tank actually lower your DPS? Now I can show you this in my Qingtre calc sheet. If I change Bonya's crit damage from 160 to 200, how much does that actually impact Qingtre's damage? Bearing in mind going from 160 to 200 is actually a lot of crit damage, but I'll do this just so that we can see the difference anyway. And you can see it's actually like 2% more damage, which is barely anything, right? That's because Bonya's ult damage only partly scales with her own crit damage. You can see at level 10, it's 16% of her crit damage, meaning 40% more crit damage on her only translates into 6.4 crit damage for a teammate, which if you've noticed in your relics is the same as one roll if it rolls the highest. Bonya actually gives more crit damage from her broken kill relic set than if you invested in her crit damage in her stats. And I can do a similar thing with Ting Yin. See, at the moment, I'm giving Ching Chue a bit over 600 attack. And if I lower that a lot, like to 500, you can see that 600 attack was also only about 2% more damage. Now, I'm not saying to ignore these scaling stats entirely, but rather it's better to just consider them as a lower priority bonus stat on your relics. So although I still would recommend you getting a crit damage body piece, on Bonya, I still would prioritize speed and HP and defense. And the same thing with Ting Yun or Lorcha. They both lack attack, but I actually personally prefer upgrades going into speed or HP first. So what's a good build goal? What I've noticed is, so you want a good balance of HP and defense. So I think a basic goal for most of these supports you can start with, I think starting with 3k HP and trying to get up to 1k defense and then for a more finished or advanced goal that can help you tackle the later difficulties of Swarm Disaster I think more like 3.5 to 4k HP as well as progressing your defense over 1k and instead more like 1.1 or 1.2k also don't be afraid to put a HP or defense piece as a main stat like on your chest or your orb you can see if I change Ting Yun's orb from attack to HP, her attack is still solid and you can always get attack substats in the piece itself like this. Also another thing is just remember that the base stats of your light cone can affect these stats. You can see here this 5 star light cone is clearly more tanky than if I switch to a 4 star one. And also remember that your pieces can be just random pieces. The optimized set is very min max. Especially if you're farming for your quantum DPSs, you can quite easily give your supports this guard set too. You can see here you want some speed, but also random HP, defense, effect rolls here and there. Obviously, you can't control which stats get upgraded, and both HP and defense are fine. And remember, these are just example guidelines. You can have slightly more defense and slightly less HP. It's not the biggest deal. Lastly, I'm sure if you have Japard or the upcoming Fushuan, I'm sure you can survive with weaker recommendations than I gave. But like this video covered, I probably still would build my supports tanky anyway because as we've learned in this video, their offense still won't matter much in the long run. And even if you've got massive shields, the more survivability, the better. So hopefully you guys found this video helpful. And if I can say one thing, always remember games like this, it's about the journey. You can't expect to have end game builds right away and getting those builds takes a mix of both time and RNG. Thanks for watching.